Good morning and welcome back. What a strange morning. It is ridiculously misty. You can't see the fields in the distance. It's very warm and just a strange. I have literally, I've committed to shorts already. We're on the hottest day of the year. So I've literally got shorts and wellies on. What a sight. <laughs> so I thought we'd start off just having a little bit of a catch up. Excuse the, um, the mess behind of where the kids have been having fun. And um, just go and open the animals up and just have a little look around and spend a little bit of the day together. I'm going to start with the ducks first um, at the side of the barn that have gone quiet because they're listening for me now to see is she coming to let us out. Um, I'm going to give these the food in the same bucket as we give them for the other chickens that are in here as well. But I'm going to let the chickens out before I let the ducks out. So I'm sending the ducks first just because we call this area the ducks area. But I'm going to let the chickens out first um, so that they get a chance to get some of the food, go down and do the other chickens which are in the paddock and then come back and let the ducks physically out last. Now we've talked a little bit about some of the projects that we've got going on in previous videos um, and the barn project is on hold just at the moment because Stephen needed some more timber and until we can get that he can't get on with the rest of the pens so that's been on hold he's been doing a couple of other things that needed to get done so as soon as that's back to life because of the but as soon as we get hold of the scaffy boards basically um, then he'll crack on with that again there's no change in the egg situation at the moment here the ducks are laying maybe one or two a day on a good day um, the chickens are just laying few and far between there's a couple that I'm going to get here because I noticed them last night but that's from from probably two or three days because we've just not been collecting them as much and um, trying to encourage them to kind of remember this is where you lay um, anyway so we'll get those now and get them fed We've got water because I did that very late last night, so I don't need to come back and do the water, but we'll need to go and do the horse's water this morning. It's an absolutely lovely morning again. I've put the feeder outside. Um, there's still plenty left in it from yesterday. I had it inside yesterday just because we'd let the sheep in the paddock. And we, what we've got, what we can do here you can close this shed door and if you see that yellow um, shovel on the right that's keeping another bit of the shed closed there's effectively there's a hatch there there's a little hatch there that we can open so that the sheep can't get in and just the chickens can and um, when we keep the big shed door closed so if the sheep come in the paddock because they will demolish all of the chicken food given the chance we just make sure that the sheep can't get in by using that hatch so that's not the case today because I locked the sheep out last night all just having a nice little drink. Can you hear the goats in the background? I think they're saying it's my turn. So misty. Can't even see the horses in the distance. Barely make out Lydia. As I said, it's going to be the hottest day of the year. I think for the whole of the UK. Um, well, at least England, let me not uh, claim to know too much today. Um, so importantly, I'm glad that we're at home for this. But I am, Stephen's at work, um, because at least we can stay on top of the water situation and make sure that everybody's okay. They've been coping really well in the heat, to be fair. Um, so just making sure that they're topped up and that nobody's having any any problems because of the heat um, but hopefully that won't happen so like I say we'll just keep everybody topped up the horses have been doing great in the heat I do need to go and do their water I noticed late on last night that it needed doing this morning um, give them a nice fresh bucket go and clean that out hello me lovelies um, these are all just quite happily having some of the food there because the ducks the ducks come out and they are thugs um, so their water was also done late last night um, of course it's already dirty so what I'll do is I'll put a bucket of water out just for these Brahmas now before I let the ducks out. They won't be happy about that because they want to be out now, but they can wait. I've just been and got the hose pipe for the Brahmas water just to top that up a bit. I've looked at the temperature there. Um, it's already 18 degrees, which is why I'm able to walk around in my shorts and not feel freezing because normally that is just a no-no for me. So I'm going to fill this up, then we'll go and do the goats. No 
eggs in that nest. Oh, we might have a couple over there. And one over here, two, two. Oh my goodness, we're being spoiled. Oh, put those in my pocket. Remind me not to smash them. Oh my goodness, you guys are bringing me good luck. Two eggs, four eggs in one day. That's unheard of. Do not smash them, Tracy. Oh, the bucket's full. That's good, they've found it. I've moved it a little bit because it was getting a little bit soggy where it was, so the ducks are busy causing muck in their pond. They can continue there as long as these guys get fresh water for a while. That's, uh, that's good with me. Now, the other thing that I wanted to look at today, you see these, um, these apples are starting to drop, so these beauties here are ready. So I shall be picking these before they go over. The wasps have had quite a few, but to be honest, I'm not too bothered about the likes of these, because all I'll do is the ones that are imperfect, I'll make sure to use immediately in like the likes of applesauce and things, because as you know, we've got a lot of things that will go with applesauce. Pork and apple is an absolute favorite of mine. Um, so anything that's got the imperfections on it, we'll just use for that kind of thing. And the others that are kind of pretty good, I'm trying to see if I can give you a good example. Um, there's some here, there's quite a few good ones. We will just use those for storage. I'm really pleased with that tree. There's a few others that we can get as well. And I also want to get the pears. So the plan today, um, the apples aren't a priority today because they will last another couple of days. And I want to get as much done before the heat kicks in as I can. I need to get some weeding done. Boring, I know. Um, I'm not gonna sit there and show you my weeding for now, don't worry. Um, but I've got quite a few things. I need to attend to some of the, sorry, wobbly. I need to attend to some of the plums that we picked that I haven't got to um, just because we've been back to work. This week has been manic, absolutely manic. So there's a few catch up jobs and with it being the hottest day, I don't really want to be inside um, cooking or anything. But if I do it outside, it stays really cool where you guys have seen me do the, um, the preparation and stuff before. So I can kind of flip between outside and in the, in the outdoor um, kitcheny bit and get lots of that done. So we'll just see how the day pans out. First of all, well, first of all, I need to get these goats fed. I've got some spare chicken food that um, I didn't need to give them because I still had some from yesterday, as you saw. So I'm going to put this back, feed the goats. But then first of all, once we've uh, done the horse's water, etc., I need to nip and get some ingredients. I'll talk about that in a sec. Having to close my eyes when I come in the barn because it is just a disaster zone. It's such a mess because we're in the middle of that project, as I say, that's on hold. Um, so nothing's going to be coming in here until we get the rest of that wood. Um, and then as soon as we get that, I assume Steve will be wanting to get straight back on with it again so that we can then move things into the barn, hope that the egg situation improves, although we'll probably be coming into winter so that it might not. Um, and then we can get the goats in, the goats can be in the paddock full time and it's less of a chore having to put them out every day for, you know, we're just timing them so that they don't gorge. But to be fair, they haven't been too bad. So I'm gonna give them their hair because they're still getting hair every day. Um, and I did their water yesterday, so that should be okay, but we'll have a little check. The water could do with just a little top up, but these guys don't drink very much. So I'm happy that they've got some there. Let's go and let them out. Good morning. It's unbelievable. Oh, let me check this gate. How much muck goats produce for such little animals. Grace only did this yesterday and already you probably can't see. This is all just from being locked in since last night when it got dark, which is what, eight, half eight, something like that. They're just pooing machines. Look at them enjoying. So they've left the hay. They've gone for the fresh leaves that have been dropped. Love fresh leaves. So they'll have those. They'll get to the hay whenever they want. I'm just going to top that water up a tiny bit. But I need to go and put the other hose pipe on to do the horse's water. I'll take a brush down there as well to give it a bit of a scrub. Um, because I noticed it was really low last night and I decided to leave it. Knowing that it was going to be a hot day today, I wanted to fill it right up to the top. But I want to give it a little clean first. Um, and then that's everything done, I think. Just got a little brush to scrub it out with. We'll walk down and do it. I forgot it's the, I need to do the sheep's water as well. Um, and check on them because I haven't checked on them this morning. So the ingredients that I need to nip out and get, I think I might try Aldi because I haven't been to Aldi in forever. Um, and like I said in one of the other videos, we're going to Tesco a little bit too much at the moment. So, good morning. <laughs> I haven't got anything, I'm sorry. Um, so if I can reduce, you know, I'm thinking if I just don't go to Tesco, I'll go to Aldi instead. And then I'll just not go as much. <laughs> That's the plan in my head. Um, 
yeah it's just been one of those things where we've been kind of we've been going more dribs and drabs instead of planning ahead and it doesn't sit well with me because I don't want to be going at all if we can help it but at the end of the day there's not just food items that we get from there so but right let's go and see these horses water is there anybody there They've not really drank much overnight, so I'll just clean the bucket out with the water that's in there and then throw it out. Are you going to have a roll, mister? Sanic's still having none of the fly spray, none of the, um, the fly rugs, the mask or anything. He's hilarious, honestly. Runs a mile as if you're trying to catch her in for a... Uh, trying to murder him or something anyway the ingredients that I'm talking about are waffling on about um I will get there <laughs> you know how distracted I get um so what I need to we're going to be dry curing our bacon this year um we've used um dry cure packs before Stephen mentioned it on his video not sure if that one's out yet or not but anyway um and in it there's like just all sorts of preservatives e-numbers nitrates and everything and we're really trying to get away from all the ultra processed kind of crap and anything like that basically so we're not trying to do it in one big bang so for example the sausage mix that we use that's got nitrates in it um you can't get away from it even if you buy organic it still has nitrates in it if you look um and you may not be bothered but that's totally fine so we are going to do a portion of our sausage meat as um pure whole food ingredient sausages basically um so i'm just going to do some sage and onion sausages um, and essentially it is just sage onion and a bit of seasoning and some breadcrumbs. So that's what I need to get ready today because we're going to be doing these tomorrow. Um, and also for the bacon, I need to go and get enough salt because I don't have enough salt in the house to be able to do the curing process. And it's, I mean, to cure bacon, you need salt and air. I'm going to put a few other spices in there, um, but essentially that'll be it. So we're really going to have a good go doing that this year. So fingers crossed it works out. I think Stephen said we've got 15 kilos of meat that we can use for bacon. Um, so that's what I need to get the ingredients for, plus a couple of things that I'm going to be using for next week um, for pack lunches and stuff. I'm going to turn this water off because that's pretty full now. As much as I'm wanting to get away from buying things for pack lunches, it's just not working really, especially for the kids who need stuff. Um, Stephen and I can just have the salads, but it's not fair to kind of just put the same... Um, to put the same, what's the word, restrictions in place for the kids as we've got on us in terms of just eating from a small holding. You know, it's nice for them to be able to have something to hand, a cereal bar to hand or something like that. And I know you can make your own, etc. But anyway, so I, I need a couple of bits and pieces in that respect. Um, and then we'll be back and we'll get on with the day. I've got wellies and trainer socks on. It's not a good combination. <laughs> I'm going to fill the sheep's water up and then we are done out here for now. There is more to do out here, a lot more to do out here. This is the white hen that I talked to you about that runs up to the barn to lay an egg every day. I don't know where she started laying since we took the nest away. So we'll have to find that as well. Not that I want to go in the barn. Maggie, air in the pipe. We all get it. Look at them. <laughs> so suspicious. That licket that we got them is um, doing fantastic. They're at it all the time. Because Stephen made a comment saying, I did, they haven't got through as much as I expected them to. They're at it all the time. It's just like really lasting. I mean, I presume it's obviously for people with a massive amount of sheep. So I think it'll probably last us like years. Um, right, so I must remember to turn this hose pipe off here. But yeah, the sheep are doing really well. Um, they're happy as Larry, whoever Larry is, outside, enjoying, you know, still being out, obviously. We won't be bringing them in until as late as possible, same as the horses, really. And that barn needs finishing. I'm going to close this because that white hen will be in there and destroying everything. Um, hang on. The hose pipe gets stuck, so the doors don't close. Anyway, um... Yeah, so we'll be bringing them in as late as possible. The barn needs doing, completing before obviously we can even think about bringing the horses in. Um, the sheep, you know, could stay out much later than the horses, but as soon as we go into that daylight change as well, um, and it's kind of darker earlier and later. Hello, Annie. 
um, then you know we really need to start thinking about then we really need to start thinking about um, bringing them in overnight even if you go out during the day which is more of a pain um, because then obviously it means that you've got to take them out on a morning bring them in on a night before it gets dark and inevitably we're still at work when it's dark right I'm gonna get ready to go to the supermarket I'll catch up with you when I'm back from the supermarket I've put the camera on because I'm just busy and on. It's like I've lost, you know, do you ever get those days where it's nice and early and you think, yeah, I've got loads to get done, I'm going to be on it. And then all of a sudden it's two hours later and you think, how did that happen? So it's already 10 past 11. The sun is already beating down, super hot. So I'm not sure how I'm going to work all this out because I want to be in the garden. But by the time I get done what I've got to get done, it's going to be the heat of the day. It's due to be like knocking on 30 degrees centigrade um in between two and five o'clock here and we're in the northeast i'm going to chop while i'm while i'm talking because um i'll show you why in just a moment um we're in the northeast of england that doesn't normally get the the high temperatures but i don't think anybody is escaping it today um in england anyway i haven't really had a look but i do know that there's a few people that i speak to from different locations and they're all in the same situation i wonder if um the north of scotland are getting it as well i know my friend louise in wales They've been having crazy temperatures that are not their usual too. Um, so yeah, I think we're all we're all experiencing it. Um, I've been shopping now. Some of the things that I started alluding to earlier is uh, when I was saying about staying out of the supermarkets or, or not going to the supermarkets as much as possible. We're obviously trying to be reliant on the garden and everything that we're getting from the garden and our freezers for the bulk of the diet. But for things like packed lunches, and I know that you can do things from the garden and take for packed lunches, but on a practical level, um, for example, we have a situation where we get a 20 minute lunch by the time you've been and washed your hands, maybe you had to go to the toilet, you've literally got, you know, 10 minutes left. And, and that's just what it is. And that's totally fine. Um, so, you know, it's it, a salad, for example, can take quite a while to eat. But if you've got a sandwich, you can just quickly eat your sandwich without giving yourself too much indigestion. And then, you know, maybe you've got a bag of crisps or um, a biscuit or, you know, something like that. And, and the point being is that, you know, I can't expect the kids, um, especially... It's my daughter that I'm alluding to. I obviously don't want to go into too much detail about her private life, but she she gets a 20 minute break on the new work placement that she's got for, for her college that she's doing now. And she's doing a couple of days in college and a work placement as well. So brilliant, really chuffed to bits for that. However, she does only get 20 minutes, as I say. Um, so rather than saying, oh, you know, take something from the small hole dinner, some boiled eggs and a bit of salad and blah, 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 she would just appreciate a plain sandwich and a bag of crisps your stereotypical lunch and that's totally fine we're just getting going on this new chapter so we are we are quite happy to accommodate that um but that means that there's certain things like that, that i still need to get from the supermarket and i will continue to until we figure out something different that's that's just that's just where we are with that and that's totally fine so supermarket is still going to be necessary for those type of purchases also for things like um the butter the milk um, I don't think our local greengrocer does the butter and milk, but I will be heading back there as and when we need to get more veg, which isn't at the moment. Um, so I'll have a look and we'll see. Um, so anyways, that's where I am in terms of supermarkets from an ultra processed food point of view. I think I alluded to that as well. Um, we're doing as much as we can to replace everything that we would have bought ultra processed with our own homegrown version of it. As we get into those type of things, I will talk about them and show you at the time um, because my brain won't think too much about that whilst I'm doing this and we don't want to lose a limb or a finger, do we? So what am I doing now? Today, um, as well as getting in the garden and lots of other non-small holding tasks, um, I need to get on um, a whole massive batch of stock and I've also got more pig fat to render down. Um, this is off the two pigs that we have just had processed. Stephen has butchered them. Um, we've still got sausage and bacon that we have got to do. That's the very last stage in the process for us. 
we will do a separate video on that if you're interested um, and again that's the kind of links into the ultra process side of things so that's what I, that's where i mentioned it i couldn't think where i'd mentioned it earlier on this morning but that was it because of the sausage ingredients the bacon that's fine got everything i needed at the supermarket um so yeah all of that is the kind of thing that i still need to get from there that conversation's finished tracy so now i am doing um rendering down the fat which i would use my big slow cooker for i had two big slow cookers I think you guys know I decided to throw one across the floor the other week um, so I only have one big slow, slow cooker now. The fat needs to go in the big slow cooker just because of the volume um, that we've got so I have got one big slow cooker left which is just you can just say see it in the shop there and I'm going to pop the fat on very soon. The reason I'm not doing the fat first is because it's the leaf lard um, it's the fat that I believe it's around the kidneys I think it is Stephen did say, he did say something else I can't remember anyway um so it's not the back fat basically we didn't take any extra back fat off our pigs because it's still on the meat that we butchered from them um there was the perfect amount of fat on these pigs we are so pleased with them turned out fantastic so we'll definitely be looking at gloucestershire roll spots again anyway so the point is i've got to get that fat on and the reason <laughs> i was saying this sorry um can you tell my mind's working at a million miles an hour because i've got so much that i want to get done and I'm trying to prioritise. So the fat can go on next because the leaf lard doesn't take as long to render down as the back fat. That was what I was trying to say. So I'll get that on. That can get doing its thing for the afternoon. And when it's absolutely stinking hot out there, it's a lot cooler in here. So I can just keep coming back to that as needed. And then I can get that um, sieved and jarred up. So that's totally fine. The other thing that I need to get done is obviously um, the stock from the bones. I say obviously, but we make stock from all of our bones. Um, no, that's not true. From a lot of our bones. Um, if I was to make it from all of the bones, I would literally need to have a couple of weeks off work, I think, um, and nothing else that I was doing because um, there is a lot of bones that you could do this from. Um, so Stephen has kept the ones that we did from we brought basically we did half a pig at home for a video for you guys so we brought half a pig home we did the youtube video on it and all of the bones that came out of that half of the pig i'm going to be using to render down into stock i simply don't have even if i did have that other big slow cooker um i simply don't have enough um tools or gadgets to be able to get that much stock on at once you can freeze the bones bring them out and do it at a later date i haven't got any space in my freezer remember <laughs> so on that then um we've got two big chest freezers in the garage which is what i was talking about i've been canning like a mad woman from those and it's gone really well um but i still haven't made enough space for the sausages we'll look at that later thankfully they're not here and they're not waiting to go in the freezer today so it's a tomorrow problem but i need to deal with it today um so i i did make enough space in them for sorry for the the threatening the threatening knife um, I did make enough space in them for all of the other joints and everything that you may have seen um, in the other video. If you haven't seen it, if you chose not to watch it, that's totally fine. But if, if it's because it's not out, it will be out very soon. It's an absolute monster to edit. It's just, it's hilarious. I'll tell you about that another day. Anyway, just because of um, how Stephen and I work together when we're filming. <laughs> anyway, it's just as well he tolerates me and... I guess just as well I tolerate him. Um, so where did I get to? So even if I had another big slow cooker, I just wouldn't have the one that I smashed. Um, I wouldn't have enough to be able to get all of those bones processed today or over the next couple of days, um, obviously with working, etc. etc. So I'm going to see what we've got. They're in. We've got another fridge in the garage that we only switch on for special occasions because, well, it's big and it costs a fortune to run. Um, so that's on at the moment. It's got the fat and the bones in it. So I'm going to get all of that dealt with, hopefully, um, in the next half an hour or so. So this is what these veggies are for. I'm going to cut up some onions as well and I'm going to make some delicious stock from those bones. Um, that is also another thing. I'm going to pressure can it. Um, it's not going in the freezer, just, just for those that are wondering. So I'm going to get some onions cut up now. I've done celery and carrots. Um, so the stock, what will it be used for? Basically, any chicken stock that you would, anytime you would use chicken stock, you could replace it with pork stock. Um, so you could interchange it, no problem whatsoever. Just think of it as a light stock in that sense, a light meat stock. Um, I've also got some 
in order to make space in the freezer for what we were putting in for the pigs, I took out a load of chicken pieces because it's one of those things, I don't know about you, but I just seem to end up with a ton of chicken pieces in the, in the freezer. I've never seemed to get to them and I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because it's only Stephen and I like the chicken pieces, believe it or not. The kids don't like chicken wings or anything like that. Um, I just don't seem to get to them. So I took a load out to make space for the pigs, but obviously they're all in there now and I've got those to deal with as well. So not only do I have pig bones, I've also got chicken uh, pieces, which have got tons of meat on them. So it's all go. I need to just keep, I need to get on with it and try and not feel the pressure basically. So I'm going to crack open or crack out the two instant pots that I've got. One is the pressure canning one that I've been using to do the pressure canning. Um, and I've also got the big um, saucepan uh, water bather. And I'm thinking I might put that on the gas on the top hob. Um, my only worry is that the gas might run out because I didn't get another one. It's so blooming expensive. Everything is just so expensive. So I'll see. I'll see where we get to. I might have to. Um, yeah, I might have to. So this is going to make some delicious stock to be pressure canned on the shelves. If you don't know what pressure canning is, long story short, it's a way of preserving um, an item, a piece of some food for long term storage on the shelf in a glass jar. Um, I do different videos on that and yes, I'm definitely doing how to, how to pressure can or how I pressure can because I'll never do how to pressure can because somebody will tell me that I'm doing it wrong. So I'll show you how I do it on a separate video and people are thinking she keeps saying that and she hasn't done it. They take quite a bit of planning. Um, it's not just the type where I can chit chat away like this. It's, you know, I need notes and I need facts and I need to make sure whatever I do say, even though it's just my version is correct. Thank you for that, whatever that was on my cheek. Right, so another thing that I was leading into, it's good to get all of this out. Thank you for doing this with me. Um, I have been taking uh, collagen. So as we age, any of us, not just not just ladies, there's different things that our bodies need, as many of you will know. And one of the things that I have been taking, um, for, for, for different reasons, but um, originally it was for aches and pains the original aches and pains have gone but i've got new aches and pains now my hips have been terrible so anyway different story um collagen is quite expensive so i've been taking a brand that um somebody recommended to me she was that thinks it was absolutely fantastic i think it is really good um but to be honest it's like 56 pound a month which to some people is nothing to me it's a lot um and can I justify £56 a month on top of the other things that I buy? So, for example, at this time of the year, we've just bought in our vitamin D. Um, so vitamin D3 is what we take um, in combination with a vitamin called K2. This is not me telling anybody that they should be doing this. Um, so we cho choose to do that because essentially our bodies can't produce where we live. Our bodies can't produce enough vitamin D over the months of approximately October to March. So we supplement and we, we take those look into it if you're interested but it's a real thing so in addition to like the vitamin d the the and the vitamin k2 you know on top of that is uh, other different bits and pieces that we may choose to take and i'm just thinking i cannot justify even though it's from a health point of view paying that when i can probably get similar from making my own really good bone broth so that's where we are today not only is this for you know using from a um recipe point of view it's using it from a health point of view so for those of you that have been around a while you may remember that I tried drinking it previously as in like a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just having bone broth instead didn't go down fantastically literally <laughs> um however you know I've been looking into it and using it in soups as we move into the cold months having it in uh, homemade um really gelatinous bone broth makes it sound gross doesn't it um in your soup every day just another way of getting it into you you know if you have a lemon lemon juice apple cider vinegar a bit of ginger kind of cup of tea on the morning um you know that kind of thing and then your bone broth in soup at lunchtime um you know or even as your evening meal with something like that i'm, I'm just chopping away here i don't know how many i'm going to need um let's do one more and then i'll stop talking yay <laughs> then you know from my point of view is that as good as buying in the collagen, paying £56 a month for it and um, 
you know but swapping it for that i'm hoping that the benefits will be the same so in addition as the expensive collagen um which is marine collagen i'm also thinking of doing um like the cod liver oil so the fish oil so which is essentially i'm guessing you know it's a fish oil marine collagen plus the co the um collagen that i'll get from my own bone broth i'm hoping that i'm going to get the same benefits because the cod liver oil capsules um the, even the high strength ones are significantly cheaper over a period of multiple months than buying just the collagen for example anyway enough of that needless to say there's many other benefits from making your own bone broth other than just that it is just ridiculously good for you so that's what we're doing today we're going to get that started this will just go on um for a long time is the uh you know literally it'll brought probably even be on overnight for the slow cooked ones the instant pot i'll probably just stick that in for two hours under under the pressure i've heard people believe that the instant pot um doesn't make i just need a cloth that the instant pot doesn't make as good of a bone broth as slow cooked but you know that's what's going to happen we're going to have we're going to have both today um, and tomorrow so that's the plan so i've got the onions carrots and celery there i'm going to add in all of your other typical um ingredients we're going to have bay leaves from the garden i'm going to grab a load of those because i want to um dry some as well up maybe just air dry them or maybe just hang them up rather than put them in the dehydrator certainly for a day like today anyway um, I'm going to shove a load of garlic in, salt, pepper, apple cider vinegar, um, peppercorns, so it won't be ground pepper. Um, that's if I can find them. I don't know where I put them. Anyway, we'll see. Yep, salt, pepper. I'm going to put some clo cloves in. Um, I'll let you know what else. I can't remember. It's just my usual celery. Uh, celery. <laughs> it's my usual stock recipe. On here as well, the other problem is I do have, um, it's not a problem, it's a nice problem. I do have another smaller slow cooker, but on a Saturday, which it is today, um, we always have um, baguettes with pulled whatever type of meat it is from the freezer. We've got pork in there today, um, so we'll have pulled pork baguettes, but it does mean that I've got to use that slow cooker when I could be using that for making stock. So I'm just going to find everything I've got and get everything on the go, and I'm going to pop the fat in the big slow cooker and then... I'll reassess what's next, shall we say. Now, apologies, because this is in a carrier bag. There's a flip and fly in here as well, so it may be a bit noisy. Um, there's just a nice amount of fat on these pigs um, to be able to manage it at home. This is like two bags in here. In the fridge, as I say, one of them is still in a vac pack. This is the one that Stephen and I did the other night. Um, ideally it will have gone through a mincer but because it's flare fat and it renders down so well uh, so quickly I'm not too worried about that I'm just going to get a knife I'm just here I tell you what I've just been over to get this out of the garage fridge goodness me it is roasting oh and how could I forget <laughs> so when I went off to the supermarket um, obviously I'd done the chicks I'm saying obviously it wouldn't be obvious to you guys I've done the chicks in the garage as well to make sure that um, you check on them a couple of times a day. They've got enough food and water over multiple days. This is rock solid. Um, so I just checked on them and I thought, oh my goodness, how could I have not shown you an update on the chicks? I don't know how I'm going to get this out of here. Just a look. There we go. So I will show you um, the chicks after we've got the stock on get all this done first day eh? and then we know that we get something achieved today nothing glamorous about this right just put this in the bin right and that's it really it's just a case of trying to get it in the slow cooker in a bit more of a a bit better of a way it's in this game so what i'm going to do is just leave that with the most contact on the on the heat as possible i'm going to put a clean tea towel over it which is this one and then just to stop any nasty bugs getting in or anything like that and then once it starts rendering this will sink down and the tea towel will stay over where are you let me have a look 
that's better can you see me so the tea towel will stay on this um because you don't want to put a slow cooker lid on because the condensation will sit on the lid and it'll drip back into the fat and you don't want water in the fat all of the water needs to evaporate and it'll evaporate into this tea towel this tea towel can then get washed and come back out another day right let's find what appliances we can use for the stock these are the veggies under here just for now i've managed to find so i've got another slow cooker but i haven't got the slow cooker lid and I think it got smashed a long, long time ago. This is kind of a plan B slow cooker um, that I kept in case for emergencies. Stephen said, throw it away, you're never going to use it, it's old. It's like really kind of old and, and rusty. Um, and I said, you never know, I might need it one day. Well, today's the day, so I'm either going to have to use a tea towel or see if I can find another lid somewhere. I've got the instant pots. These are going to be the first two. This is the... Um, the instant pot that I use for making stocking, not the new canning one. And these are going to be the first two appliances that I'm going to, going to get on the go. I've just spent um, 15 minutes looking for my massive stock pot, only to remember it's actually the one that's got the bones in it at the moment. So I'm going to get all this underway and I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. I'm going to have to use the gas, um, otherwise I'm never going to get through this. Fingers crossed it doesn't run out. Right, we're getting there. Do you remember our home garlic had these tiny little bulbs, um, like on the, so this is just a really small one. It was growing up on the stem and they were all here. I'm just going to make sure that doesn't go on the floor. The dog's here. Um, uh, garlic is poisonous for dogs, um, in case you didn't know. I'm just going to throw those in whole, not peeled or anything, and I'm just using the, the smaller cloves, um, you know, that I'm not going to necessarily want to faff on and peel when I'm cooking every day. I'm just going to use those in the stock. I'm not going to be shy. I absolutely love garlic. It is so good for you. It's got so many medicinal properties. Um, I'm also going to go and grab some ginger just because I've got some and um, the cider vinegar, as I say, um, because that is supposed to really help draw out. I don't know if it's true. It doesn't do any harm and I like the flavour of it, um, but it's supposed to help draw out um the nutrients the collagen etc from the bones so it's not going to do any harm um just going to cut off any 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 bits that are a bit questionable on these bits of garlic some of them had a little bit of mold not many of them which i'm really pleased about but obviously i don't want anything like that going into this stock it's going to last us well who knows how long it'll last us because we can go through a heck of a lot if i set my mind to it and replace it for all of the cooking water that we use um that one's a little bit too mouldy. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know how long. I will let you know how long it is. I've got some other stock on the shelves. I've got some mushroom stock that I keep avoiding. Don't know why. Well, I do know why because it looks revolting. Um, but we will we'll get to that in the winter, I am sure, because I'm really going to make um, an effort of kind of just not buying all of the extra bits and pieces. Um, one thing that I do use that I'll ask you while I'm while I'm doing this and we're chatting again, I'm clearly in a chatty mode today. Um, we use in the past gravy granules and you've heard me say I've got no um, snobbery around using gravy granules at all. But um, what, do, what do other people use? So my friend, she, she will never use gravy granules. Um, spoke about it years ago with her here. Um, she comes here and, and does bits of, with the horses um, and she doesn't use gravy granules at all or at least that's what I remember her saying um, and I know that obviously you can make your own gravy if you've got a joint and you use the meat juices and add a bit of flour and a bit of water etc etc alcohol if you want to if you want to be flash um, but yeah what do people use so I'll make up a stew and use gravy granules um, as the kind of just add ingredient and cook it down in that do you just use water and thicken it at the end or stock rather like an oxo cube or your own stock and thicken it at the end genuinely interested in that one because it's just one one less thing that i would buy at the supermarket but it's just out of what's the word wait habit <laughs> um it's just out of habit that i do it and uh, it's just a, another little um habit to break i guess Right, so I'm going to throw, I don't know how many I put in that one, but quite a few in that first instant pot. I'm going to throw quite a few more in each one. Go and get the ginger and the other ingredients um, and then I'll get these on and then I'll come back to you then. I promise I won't keep interrupting you when you think that um, I'm not going to come back until they're on. And then we shall get some time in the garden and see how hot and sweaty it is out there. 
They are all ready just for the water and the herbs now. So I'm going to go and grab some herbs. I've definitely got bay. I've got thyme. I've got a ton of sage out the front. Um, if we get time today, we'll go thyme. <laughs> we'll go and have a look at the um, tomatoes out the front because I want to harvest all of those that we've got. They haven't got blight. How is uh, well, they didn't have. Let's have a look today if we get a chance. Um, what else have I got? Parsley, a ton of parsley. So we shall uh, harvest them together, put them all in. I've just got to top them up with water the things um i was thinking actually the instant pot the things the devices the electronics what they're called appliances goodness me um i was thinking actually for the instant pot rather than doing it um on under actual pressure uh, there's a slow cooker function isn't there well i've never used the slow cooker function on the instant pot so i thought let's give that a go and see what it's like um the hat's going to be coming out soon because it's so bright very, very warm. Let's have a quick look what the temperature is in the greenhouse on the way past. And I can talk to you about my um, the little plug plants that you saw me so blooming heck. Okay, so we're already on 38 in here. So I'm going to try and leave this door open a touch um, because I don't see any chickens. Right, let me switch you off and I'll come back to you when we've got the herbs. This is a huge bowl of herbs. Most of it is parsley. Um, it's a bit of oregano. I've taken the top off the bay tree um, to hopefully make it bush out because it's just reaching for the sky at the moment. Um, what else have we got? There's parsley, rosemary, oregano and thyme. Very nice. The final thing I might add in, I can't find my peppercorn, so I will just use ground pepper. I do prefer to use um, peppercorns, but never mind. I had them for a recipe. <laughs> oh, I wonder if... Anyway, we'll see. Um, the other thing I was thinking about adding is tomatoes, fresh tomatoes. I've never added fresh tomatoes in stock. Obviously, I've had, had them in recipes and things when I've used stock, and very nice it is too. Um, don't know, I saw it on, I think it was an old Simple Living Alaska video. Who doesn't love Simple Living Alaska? Um, they added tomatoes in theirs, so... I've got a few hanging about, I might just throw them in, I'm not going to do any harm, certainly not. It's all getting pressure canned. Um, I'll show you the last bits and pieces. I've just been got some ginger as well, so we'll add some of that in. Hello Annie darling. And we'll, uh, we'll get that underway and then that's two big jobs out of the way thankfully. Well, started because there's the end of the, the job to do as well. Let's start with the slow cooker one because um, that's close to hand. It's hiding under this tea towel. Right, so we've got ginger, which I'm literally going to crudely put four bits of ginger in here. I'm not peeling it. There's so much goodness in the fibre, uh, in the skin. I've got some chilies that I got for a totally different recipe when I was on holiday, as in off the paid job. Didn't get to it. Oh, that one's going a bit mouldy, but... That can go in my compost. I'm just going to throw that in. A lot of these, remember, will be used for soups and things um, that will be that the, these flavours will marry up very well with. I've got coriander seeds. Again, there's no kind of measurements here. I'm not frightened to kind of go over the top with the flavourings because a lot of stock um, can be very bland. And I know you can add them afterwards. Quite a bit of pepper. I add salt at this stage. Some people don't add it until afterwards. And then the herbs, what have we got here? I'm just gonna whack these in like this because it's all gonna get sieved at the end. I know you can only see half my face. Um, and these are the types of bays that I've got. So I'm just gonna take, I don't know, maybe four bay leaves off. Give them a bit of a bruise. Not washing any of these herbs. Got a stalk of rosemary or two, slightly smaller one for this one. Could just put the full stalk in, but it's a bit sticky. What else have we got? Parsley. Just them out. Oh, and I did get. Um, now people say you shouldn't can sage because it goes bitter. But I got some pineapple sage because it was just looking pretty and good to use. Oh my gosh, it smells so nice. Right, that's literally it. Top it up with water. I've just got some from the tap. And then just literally leave this on. 
maybe until this time tomorrow and then we can pressure can actually we won't be back in until after lunch so as long as this is doing okay um i shall leave it um and then pressure can these tomorrow once they've been hmm how am i going to stop the tea towel going in there once this pork is done i'll just put that lid on this slow cooker um Okay, don't do this at home. Right, that one's away for the whole meal tonight. Gosh, that's quite hot. Right, just trying to keep the flies out and keep the moisture in. This isn't the best job, um, but it'll do for now. Right, I'm going to do this for all of the other stocks. I've got one on the hob already. I'm going to do the other one in the slow cooker in the instant pot here. And then, good job done, or at least started. <laughs> put this on the back burner because this one is the biggest one it does tend to get super hot you can't kind of keep it on a simmer so I'm going to bring it up to the boil on this burner and we'll see how we get on might have to put it on this one at the front um, I'm hoping the gas which is underneath lasts and then over here we've got my contraption for the lid for the slow cooker as soon as this comes up to heat I've got it on high as soon as this boils I'll knock it down onto low that's obviously our evening meal the wine we shall come to it's looking good um, and then we've got 90, the most highest this setting would go to if the slow cooker was 20 hours. Um, so obviously I just set it to that and we'll see how it gets on. I'll come and see how quickly it gets to heat. You can see the lid starting to condense. So it's been on for eight minutes um, and it's starting to come to heat, but it's literally just the slow cooker option. So that is the stock underway. Let's have a look at the fat. So looking at the, uh, the top of it, it doesn't look like much has happened. You guys might not be able to see. I can't see either. Let me just put my light on. Nothing's happening on that. Yeah, I've decided against putting any of the tomatoes um, in the stock. It was There was plenty enough going on. If you do make stock, by the way, um, you know, I used to make it every week. Um, I didn't, I stopped doing that because, well, to cut a long story short, we didn't have a chicken carcass every week. That was the thing. Um, and you don't have to put your basic ingredients. You can just do chicken uh, bones and what if you want. Some people roast the bones. I just like to do, when I do a big pot like this, I want to do the pigs justice um, and use, you know, all of what we've got from, brought home from them to use. I want to make sure that I do the best by it. So I've added all of the nice ingredients in that we've got um, from the garden as well. because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And, you know, just to try and make a re really flavoursome stock. Who knows? I might even be able to drink it. We shall see. Um, but these are on now and just going to come back to them, keep checking on them throughout the day. It's around about that time when Stephen is due home. So what I think I'm going to do is um, get a couple of hours worth of other stuff done that I need to get done. People are going to want feeding soon. Um, and even though I've been busy with food, what feels like all morning, there's still nothing to eat. <laughs> is that typical or what? Um, so I'm going to get sorted with that. And... When I get a chance to get in the garden, if I'm literally sweating in the shade, um, then I'll come back and show you what's going on there. As I say, I want to harvest the tomatoes out the front. I've got a ton of sage that needs harvesting, loads of other herbs that need harvesting, some beans, um, just all the things. And that is before or after whatever I even get to the weeding. Um, so we'll see how I get on with that. I might be able to kind of just dip in and out for, even if it's just 10 minutes at a time, because... I'm not very good in the heat. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really not very good in the heat. Um, so yeah, I'll come back to you later on with that. I'll certainly show you how this progresses if I don't get into the garden as much as I want to. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to do a totally different video, as I say, because we're going to be looking at the sausages and the bacon. We're going to do a taste test too. I'm actually in the greenhouse the day after now. I spent all of yesterday afternoon out here, but I was weeding non-stop. I wasn't even weeding the veg plot. I was weeding this area here behind me. Can you see? Can you see this? You might look and think, what what's she done? Well, all of it was really, really weedy. It was more like this bit here, which you'll probably be able to see on the camera. So literally sat on a bucket, hand weeding the whole thing. Um, we were out there for hours, <laughs> honestly. So you didn't want to see that, I'm sure. Um, 
that's done but my goodness i am aching today uh what i need to get done before the rain starts so it's sunday Stephen and i have done that video um this morning about the sausage and the bacon and all of that that'll come out at some point because i'm trying to catch up with my video editing because the one that we did um sorry you know story time with tracy um the video that we did of the butchering of the pigs very tasteful um if not every, that's not everybody's thing that's totally fine that's why i do them separate um that video it's taking forever to edit because there's so much footage and want to get the right things in there etc etc so that the one that we did this morning is a follow on follow one on to that um so that's kind of like for later on in a week obviously this one can just go out no problem at all because it's uh, there's no issue on timing from that perspective um but it's sunday afternoon that was my point in telling you that and it's due to rain we've had ridiculous heat again today um it's not been too bad compared to yesterday and the days that we've had but it's still super, super muggy, but it is going to rain. So I want to go in the front garden and get all of those tomatoes that um, you saw me plant harvested. And there's already more have already ripened in here, but I can work in here when it's raining. So we're going to start um, in the front garden and then I want to go and get some salad, which is for the rest of this week and anything else that I can get harvested from outside. I'm going to do that first. Um, so if it does rain, we won't get wet. <laughs> So we're out the front. As you can see, some of them have done fantastically. Um, they don't seem to have blighted out the front either. So front being the front of the house. So I'm just going to pick all of these, get them in my basket. And I think that'll be it for these tomato plants. Once this is done, I'll be able to get these out and composted this week. I can feel the weather changing. It's um, The rain is on its way. Now this variety here are the smaller, are they called San Marzano I think they are aren't they, um, paste ones. They really don't grow as big as I wanted or hoped should I say. Um, I'm thinking next year, are the Amish paste tomatoes for those of you that know, are they, um, I'll leave that on there it's not good, are they the same, Amish paste, are they the same as the San Marzanos? Because I was, I saw that on somebody else's channel and um, was wondering if they're slightly bigger because hers grew a lot bigger than this size and take these and let them ripen inside I think I'm gonna get all the red ones first just in case I get rained off it's coming I can hear it already literally as soon as I sit down the heavens are opening it's due to be heavy as well can you hear it on the camera We've got some pruning to do as well this afternoon. Um, I only found out yesterday that you're supposed to, um, sorry, I've just put all these on the floor. Let's pick them up. I only found out yesterday that you're supposed to prune cherry trees um, in July and August and we didn't. Sorry, looking at the floor there. Um, yeah, we didn't get to it in July and August. So I said to Stephen, ah, that cherry tree that needs pruning before we put the new poly tunnel up. Nowhere near doing that, by the way. Um, there's a lot of jobs such as pruning the peri peri tree, cherry tree that need doing first. Um, so we're going to get it done now and hope that we get away with doing it um, early September. Spoke too soon, got rained off. It's um, coming down a lot heavier. So I'm just going to get all of the ones in the greenhouse first. I do need to get salad, uh, lettuce basically, if nothing else, from outside. So I'll try and duck out in between showers to do that. Um, we will get the lard and... Some of the cacks at cack. We will get the lard and some of the stock canned on this video as well, hopefully. I'm just gonna do it in the instant pot. I'm not gonna get the big canner out because I won't have time to get that done today. As I say, it's been a really busy day anyway for us. Um, and I know what'll happen. It'll, it'll put me off doing it and I'll procrastinate, avoid doing it. And then it just won't get done. Oops, dropped a tomato. So these tomatoes, um, this variety, this is the bloody butcher. Now, what I want to do, I don't know if you can see me or not because my camera's facing the other way. I want to keep some of these for seed saving. The bloody butcher are not an F1, they're not a hybrid. They are open pollinated, which um, means, as far as I'm aware, that I can save the seed from them and they should come back true next year. As in, they'll grow again exactly the same, if not better, than they are this year so i will be keeping a nice specimen um, and keeping seed from them so the way i'm going to do it on the uh, real seeds website i know many of you have heard of them they have got fantastic advice on how to save seed and it involves basically putting the seeds in a jar and fermenting them um oh, there's a fly there 
so I'm going to follow their advice basically so we shall get that done together because I want to do this and I want to do um what was the other variety I thought I can't remember if it's a sun gold no the sun gold's the f1 so you can't do it so the gardener's delight but the bloody butcher anyway are one that will definitely be on featuring on my um growing list every year I'm going to leave those to ripen up a little bit more So for our lunches, um, we're taking in salads with the likes of, well, absolutely these beauties, um, but like eggs, hard boiled eggs, meat that we from the small holding, um, and salad leaves from out there. Look, these are the country taste. It's got a little friend, can you see? I can't see the camera again. That's gone a little bit funky on the bottom, but that's um, unexpected. I didn't see that one, which is why it's been left to go like that. That's great. Whilst we're in here, these um, country taste side shoots are looking absolutely fine. I'm really pleased with those guys. And then up here amongst the mess, the um, Big Mama one, it's, it's not dyed, so it could be worse. I'm gonna have a look. This is what's left of the Big Mama plant hasn't been growing that much so I'm uh, gonna see if we've got this is another side shoot here um, this was a different plant it was the side shoot was taken off this one originally so I may take one of these smaller ones and get that potted up as well and see how we get on I've missed a couple look even in the rain delicious so I know in the, oh, here we go again. Just when you think it's finished. Um, in the polytunnel, you guys saw me harvesting those blighted tomatoes. I have not got them all done. There is so many. So I still need to get more done in there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that now because my basket is quite full. Um, and the more you put in, the more they get squashed underneath. And also the ones in the bed in the corner, I was trying to think where they were then, uh, in the leak bed over in the corner there. Um, there's a few there that I can grab as well, not many, so I do need to get those um, at some point this week But I will probably have to preserve them might do some sort of pasta sauce or something like that and just do them in the smaller batches I have got another big job on still with the freezers though, which um, If you guys have seen about the whole uh, getting the freezers used used, used up, up as in eating them as quickly as we can What I mean is um, free them up by pressure canning the contents to put on the pantry shelves I thought that I'd got enough space achieved. Well, I hadn't, it turns out, so I'm going to need more. So I'm going to be continuing with that this week as we move ahead. Um, but yeah, the only thing, there's other things in the garden that I need to harvest or want to harvest, the beans, etc. Um, so we'll have some of those picked fresh for our meals this week. Um, obviously, I've got the potatoes, the garlic, the onions, um, the tomatoes. We're eating the aubergines as we're picking them. There's not been that many. Um, and the beans will do the same, but I may have some to freeze. I also want to keep some for seed. So it's not just the tomatoes I want to keep for seed. There's peas out there that I was hoping would be dry, given that the weather that we've had um, to keep for seeds as well. But having said that, we'll sh we shall see. But I do need to get some of the lettuce, as I say, for our lunches for the week. Um, I'll probably just get wet. Let's go and get some. Quickly, before it starts to thin in the same basket for now. These have been washed. I'm going to pick all the outer leaves. Any that, oh, I just dripped on myself. Any that are no good will go to the chickens. I won't leave them on the plant, such as these. Goodness me, 
it's going down my back, down my trousers. Right, I only got the, um, can you see me? I can't tell, I hope so. Um, I picked the full cops because they are starting to shoot, starting to go to feed. Um, and I got loads of the, is it Lola Rosso or whatever it is, can't remember. Um, but that would be perfect, at least for the first few days. There's other things here that are desperate to get out, we just haven't got to it. So we're going to do another um, something every night this week of getting things out into the garden, uh, ready for autumn and winter. There's absolutely nothing glamorous about this. It's literally taking the melted fat from the slow cooker. If this one doesn't need straining, it's lovely and clear. You can see when we're doing it. Topping up these jars and then cleaning them up with a fresh paper towel, putting a lid on and they will seal because of the heat. These are boiling away. And what you can see the contents in the slow cooker here that's left um, that'll just be discarded once we've taken all the fat out. I'll let it cool and I'll discard it. Either give it to the chickens or pop it in the bin, depending on um, how it turns out. But hopefully the chickens will enjoy this tomorrow. So that's it for now. I hope you have enjoyed this little video and we will catch up with you next time.